Dune 2021 showed me a kind of film that I had never seen before. At least, I had never seen the start of before. Dune was the beginning of a brand new saga of films. One that I would argue will be remembered in the same breath as Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. It had such a surreal feeling. I had genuinely forgot I was watching a movie the first time I saw it. The imagery and the sound design are just so impeccable and so enthralling. It really brings you into the frame and it just makes you feel this surreal emotional depth. It really just brings you into the frame and makes you feel the movie. You don't just watch it, you feel it. Going into this film, I was expecting more of these incredible mesmerizing images and impeccable sound design, but what I didn't expect was the heart. The first Dune, while it was full of soul, that soul really came from the visual storytelling and from the sound design. It came from the experience of the film, not the actual story necessarily. And you certainly wouldn't be wrong in accusing that film of lacking in character depth. This film, however, manages to deliver both on the incredible mesmerizing imagery and sound design that we were expecting, and giving an extraordinary amount of character depth and development not only to the characters, but to the story and to the world of the story. We get to see more of the Fremen culture and belief system. We get to see more of the Imperial system, including actually seeing the Emperor. We get to see more of Arrakis than we ever really thought was there. We get to see more of the Atreides and of the Harkonnens, but we also get to see more into the characters. We get to see more of Paul Atreides, of what motivates him, what he believes, what he stands for. We get to see more of his mother, what she believes, what she's up to, and we get to see more of how the Empire works. We get to see more of what the Emperor believes about the war and about everything going on and about how or why he's doing what he's doing. Dune Part 2 hugely ramps up the scale of this saga, bringing it to an entirely new level of popularity and fame that I believe it is 100% earned. This film was an event, the same way that Star Wars or Lord of the Rings was an event when those films were still being released. Now, being born in 2004, I never got to see that. I was alive, yes, but I was like, what, two when Lord of the Rings finished starting out? I was one when Star Wars finished? I never really got that experience. The closest I ever got was The Dark Knight, but again, I didn't see those movies in theaters when they were first coming out. I saw them much later in life when they were less popular, or at least when the hype was died down a bit. The closest thing I ever really got to that experience was the MCU, but that was rather empty by comparison. What I mean is, for the most part, especially now, the MCU is becoming sort of a shell of a franchise. It's just systematically putting out film after film every year, multiple times a year sometimes even, and it's just soulless. But now that the MCU is dying and cinematic universes are dying as a whole, as a result, sagas like Dune or original films like Oppenheimer are able to thrive, and that really gives me hope. The future of filmmaking and the future of cinema looks bright. Zeng Films. Subscribe. I haven't done an end of card video in a while, so I'm gonna do one again. That's fun. I don't know. Bye.